There are 10 different ways to make more money. First thing you wanna do if you wanna make anything is you have to grow yourself first, which means that you have to increase your skill set. So you need to invest in your skills. So one of the best skills that you can invest in that will help you make more money is learning sales and marketing, especially if you're starting a business. So for me, one of the things that I realized that helped me make more money is that I was able to sell better, I was able to position my products better, I was able to monetize my products and services by learning branding as well. So one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make is they don't want to invest in themselves. Like people are quite happy to go and spend, you know, $5,000 on a watch, but they won't spend $5,000 on this. Now there's a difference between spending and there's a difference between investing. So we want to invest in this. This is our biggest asset. The second thing is you want to pursue passive income. Most people, they trade time for money, which means every hour they work, they get paid a fee. In actual fact, you should be thinking about what else can I do that the effort that it takes me to sell something once, it's the same effort for me to sell something once and get paid over and over again. So I'll give you an example. A lot of people ask me about passive income, about business and about wealth creation. One of these three topics, instead of having to spend time one-on-one -on -one with people, what I do is I actually create a knowledge base that people pay to access. Think of it like a Netflix, but for business and entrepreneurship. So that's kind of what I created. And actually, if you are interested in learning more, you can check out success.club. And that's one of the reasons why I created it. And that's also why I buy real estate because real estate, if I rent the property, out, let's say the mortgage is, you know, a thousand pound, but I can rent it for 3000. Each property then makes me 2000 per month, right? So if I keep buying more of them, then I create more passive income. So a lot of people don't pursue passive income. They're only pursuing one-time fee. The third thing is freelance and consulting. If you're in a job right now, and I know a lot of people who quit their jobs and actually do full-time consulting. So sometimes they'll make their monthly salary in just a few keynotes or a few consults. That's why if you have knowledge in your heads, maybe you work for a law firm. So I know a lawyer who used to work for one of the top law firms. She then stopped practicing. She's still a lawyer, but what she does now, she goes and she consults other companies and advises them, hey, here's how you can CYA, which means cover your ass. So now she gets paid more as a freelancer and a consultant rather than getting paid as a lawyer. And also she has more time as well. If you want to make more money, you might consider doing that. And the fourth thing is you might want to start a side business. So if you think about all the things that you're really good at doing, you want to focus on what you're passionate about and you can take what you're passionate about and you can turn that into an income. For example, I'm passionate about speaking. I speak all around the world and people always ask me, John, how did you become a speaker? How do you stand on stage and speak to thousands of people and how do you get paid to travel the world and get paid to impact? For me, I started training a lot of speakers and this is many years ago. I started training a lot of speakers up and these speakers would go out and speak and some Sometimes people would come to me and say, hey, John, I'm a good speaker now, but I actually don't know where to speak. Could you put me in touch with some of these speaking engagements? And so by doing that, I can also get a referral fee for whatever business they get from that. So these are some of the things you might want to think about. You also want to cut out unnecessary expenses. There are income that you spend, which is a liability, and there's income that you spend, which is an asset. So what a lot of people do is they spend the majority of their money on liabilities, basically things that don't return you any Anything. So every time we put money to something, we want to look at the ROI, which is your return on investment. And I think a lot of people, they always think about doing this, but they don't actually consciously think about putting money into something that can return them an ROI. So for example, where do I put a lot of my money? I put a lot of my money on traveling around the world, meeting great people, joining masterminds, buying a lot of books, buying a lot of courses, and joining networks of people when they run events. And sometimes I go to the event not to particularly learn anything, but it's actually to go in there to meet people, right? But it's also going there to see the experience as well. So when you meet people, these people can become either your business partners, they become your joint venture partners or your collaboration partners. So this is what I found in being in business over the last 20 years. This is what I've really focused on. And number six is you want to invest wisely. When I'm making investments in things, I always want to make sure that the things that I'm investing in, what is the payback period? Here's the thing with investing, right? Don't invest all your money in one thing, right? Do the 30, 30, 30, 10 strategy. 
And if you haven't seen my video on that, make sure you go to johnlee.com and you can check out the video I did on this whole topic. But it basically talks about, and let me summarize it for you, we put 30% into our own business, 30% into other people's businesses, 30% into assets, digital assets, physical assets, and 10% into immune shots, right? So that's pretty much what the keynote was about. Now with investments, you have to know that there's not a guaranteed return. In fact, you could lose all of your investment. So this is why you must invest wisely, all right? And you gotta take ownership for that. Do the research, do what, the market like? Is there any demand for this? When you look at the debt, what are the projections? Who's actually on there? So when you are investing wisely, you know, we don't always expect an instant return. In fact, most companies you invest in, you know, expect between a seven and 10 years. That's how long it normally takes. Because the way when you invest in a company, you have to wait for that company to get acquired before you can get paid. Or you have to wait for the company to maybe merge with another one, or maybe some of them sell on secondaries or they go public. There's all these different things, but when we're investing, for me, I've made a lot of investments where I've lost a lot of money. I've made a lot of investments where I've made a lot of money. And if you look at the startup world, there's a lot of the companies that you invest in, only small percentage of them do really well. So you have to diversify your investing as well. That's what I do. Another one, if you wanna make more money, and this is the big one that I found, is you want to improve your negotiation skills. For example, whether you're negotiating real estate. So every property I buy, I always want to buy below its market value. And my target below market value is between 20 and 30%. You're thinking, John, so that means if you're buying a property for a million, you would negotiate it to either 800,000 or 700,000. The answer is yes. And I have done these types of deals before but it just takes a little while to find. And that's why patience is really important when it comes to business. So when you're improving your negotiation skills, it's negotiating with business partners, it's negotiating with investors, it's negotiating with your vendors, it's negotiating sometimes with your customers, and maybe sometimes it's negotiating with your board. These are some of the things I want you to start thinking about if you want to make more money. And that's why you should read a lot of books on negotiating. You should take some sales training programs, negotiation programs. I remember when I used to go to people and say, hey, your property's worth a million and I'll buy it for 700,000. Most people would always say no. So instead, negotiation is one of the best negotiations that you can do is to tell them what you're going to do before you do it. So for example, someone jumps on a call with me, say, hey, look, I noticed your property is worth a million. You are aware that we buy property really fast, but in exchange, we buy between a 20 and 30% discount. Is that something you would entertain? Most people say no, but there is a handful of people that say, yes, these become my deals. That's why deal flow and lead flow is so important. Right? In fact, at the end of this, I'm gonna link a video that can help you get a lot more lead flow and start a business and start making more passive income, okay? So improving your skills is really important. Also, optimizing your current job. Like if you're in a job right now, you can optimize it. I know a lot of people who are taking pay cuts and they go part-time so they can start something full-time, if that makes sense. When lockdown happened and people went back to work, they're like, I don't wanna work anymore. Right? I want to have the flexibility. I want to do the things I want to do in life. So what happens is take a step back and you know what happens? They then start something on the side. And I think that's really important to understand that whenever we're doing things, we've got to make sure that we are really looking forward to optimizing, having more time, because sometimes I think it's the time that is sucked up that doesn't allow us to achieve success in our life. So we've got to have that time to do it. By the way, if you have any questions on what I'm talking about, leave a question below. I'll personally come in and answer that. The ninth one is to create intellectual property. Create something that can either be licensed or intellectual property or known as IP is basically your way of doing things. So for example, you know, when people ask me, John, how do you buy property? I buy property below its market value. I use this exact same script. So when I speak to somebody, I ask them some questions and based on the questions, they give me their objection. Based on the objection, I'd overcome the objection, right? So I have a specific way of doing things. And what people do is they pay to access that IP. Same with investing. Like a lot of you know that there are lots of different ways to buy business. Just like you can buy property, you can also buy businesses. There's something called a leveraged buyout where let's say you wanna buy a company for a million. People think that you have to have a million pound to be able to buy that company. No, you can do something called a leveraged buyout. This is actually, if you go to success.club, we actually have a whole training, there's a 21 day training in there that teaches you how to buy businesses without having to use your own money, right? And by the way, the guy who teaches it, he's done over 100, IPOs and bought a lot of companies. So he teaches that in success.club as well. And the last thing I think is really important is networking more effectively. So be conscious of when you're networking. So for me, it takes multiple touch points. First of all, like when I'm networking, it's like, okay, this person needs to know who you are. And then you have another meeting where that person sees you again, you add more value. And then with the third meeting, it's like, hey, let's have a coffee. And then the best way to do this is to go to an event. So you go to the event, you start meeting people, but the deals are done outside 
outside of the event the morning after or the day after, right? So you meet the people, you say, okay, let's go for a coffee tomorrow. And you just basically stack up all your meetings the day after or the week after. So if you go to an event, it's advisable to stay there for at least another three or four days. My MD calls these magic days where you get to make them free and then people come, they have coffee with you, have dinner with you, have lunch with you. And that's where a lot of the deals happen. You know, sometimes I'll fly all the way across the world and they're you know, eight to 10,000 miles to have one meeting then fly back. And you may be thinking, John, that's not really a great use of time. No, it's not. So what I do is when I fly there for a meeting, I make sure I have a podcast, I have a keynote, I do my meetings as well. Then I have time to do sightseeing, then I fly back. So these are some of the things you wanna think about if you wanna make a lot more money. By the way, if you know anybody who really would love to earn more income, do me a favor and share this video with them. And also if it's yourself that wants to learn how to start a business, make more money, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like this video. It just helped the algorithm. I'll be creating brand new content on how to do business, how to do marketing, branding, sales, monetization, but also to create this success mindset. If you enjoyed this, also check out this video here as well.